If you're familiar with any drug mafia, you might have heard about a man named Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes. Doesn't ring a bell? What about El Mencho? Nemesio Osguera Cervantes, better known as El Mencho, was one of the drug lords of Mexico, the USA, and God knows how many countries. In fact, he was one of the most powerful people in all of America and Mexico. But his downfall started when he got betrayed by his own men. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video, so make sure you watch this video until the end. So, Nemesio Osguera Cervantes, being over 50 years old, has reached the peak of his criminal career. In fact, he was identified as the leader of the new generation Jalisco Cartel Oseguera, known as El Mencho, who became the most wanted man in Mexico and the United States. He's the second most wanted Mexican in the United States. The first was Rafael Caro Quintero, El Narco de Narcos, because of the murder of Enrique Kiki Camarena, who was a former U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration agent. But immediately afterward, on the list of the most wanted is the face of Nemesio Osguera El Mencho, leader of the CJNG. So basically, the story of Esguera Cervantes is extraordinary because the vast majority of Mexican narcos of his generation have been imprisoned or have died violently. According to the U.S. Department of Justice's indictment, El Mencho has led CJNG, or its embryonic version, at least since 2000 and has managed to expand it to most states in Mexico and several cities in the United States. In spite of this, he had taken his first steps into the narcotics business much earlier than that. On July 17, 1966, Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, one of six brothers from an avocado-growing family, was born in Naranjo de Chila, a small town in the southeastern part of Michoacan. It's said that he was baptized with the name of Ruben and he was called Nemesio in honor of his godfather. In addition, some sources claim that his birthplace was in the municipality of Naranjo de Chila and others say that it was in Uruapan or Aguilila. There is a possibility that it was the latter, since there, just after he had finished school in the fifth year of his elementary school education, he was hired to take care of the avocado fields owned by the Valencia family, which he had just left behind from his school life. In the early days, the family was referred to as the Avocado Cartel because it was trafficking marijuana hidden within the shipments of fruit. But the Millennium Cartel came into being when their interest shifted to growing marijuana and poppy. They were so powerful in their land that one of them, Jose, was even elected mayor of their city in 1989, nominated by the PRD party. As a teenager, El Mencho became a plantation watchman and then a trafficker when he grew up with them. In spite of the fact that he probably dreamed of more than avocados, he packed up and moved to North California in the United States of America within a few years. At the age of 20, he had already immigrated into the United States. During his time in the San Francisco Bay Area, he became involved with a heroin and methamphetamine trafficking gang and tried to build a clientele. As reported by Josh Eels in Rolling Stones magazine, based on information from U.S. authorities, Abigail Gonzalez Valencia, El Queenie, and the brother-in-law of Esguera Cervantes trained him in the drug trade. He and his older brother, Abraham Oseguera, was arrested in 1986 when they sold heroin to two undercover police officers. They were sent to federal prison in 1992 and then deported. On a backup photo of the incident, Mencho wears a hooded sweatshirt and has acne on his face. It was two months later that his first child was born, Jessica Johanna Oseguera. After being released from prison in 1997, he enrolled as a police officer in Tomatlan, Jalisco. During his time there, he became involved with the Nava Valencia brothers of the Millennium Cartel and with Nacho Coronel of the Pacific Cartel, also known as the Chapo Guzman Criminal Organization. In a sense, El Mencho became kind of a security advisor and a strategic piece of drug trafficking in the United States once he left the police force, according to Eels. In 2011, CJNG formed El Mencho, which quickly expanded throughout Mexico as well as internationally to the United States, Colombia, and unconfirmed, Canada, Argentina, Holland, Ghana, Nigeria, Morocco, Russia, China, South Korea, Germany, Peru, Central America, Bolivia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Poland, Australia, and Cambodia, which by 2018 would surpass the Sinaloa cartel in drug trafficking. A local newspaper reports that Oseguera Cervantes supposedly hides in the mountains of Jalisco and suffers from kidney failure, which keeps him on dialysis and confined to a bed so his lieutenants would run the organization. It is said that his alleged condition makes him susceptible to COVID-19. In February 2020, Mexico and the United States brought an end to Mencho's criminal activities through the extradition of his son, Ruben Oseguera Gonzalez, El Menchito, 
and the arrest of his daughter, Jessica Joanna Oseguera Gonzalez, while she attended her brother's trial. But El Mencho, alias Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, has kept a low profile for several years to avoid capture by Mexican or U.S. authorities, where he has already been designated a public enemy. It's been reported that Oseguera Cervantes is on a leap of faith in the hills and mountaintop of Michoacan, Jalisco, and Colima, hiding among cabins, camps, and humble houses in order not to attract attention and continue with his prolific criminal business and fugitive status. However, before the new generation Jalisco cartel became one of the main targets for the U.S. and Mexican authorities, El Mencho lived in luxury homes and cabins, established more than 100 Japanese food restaurants, established real estate, newspapers, shopping malls, and even tried to export tequila to Europe. Additionally, he owned a ranch where exotic animals were kept, including a flare tiger and other endangered species. In those years, when the number one public enemy of the United States was Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, Nemesio Oseguera enjoyed his relative anonymity, could give himself a life of luxury, and enjoyed one of his favorite pastimes that gave him one of his nicknames, El Señor de los Gallos. But things have changed since Oseguera Cervantes became the top priority for the United States. The capo had to change his behavior drastically to avoid attracting attention and being captured. As a result of the cooperation between the U.S. and Mexican authorities, its mode of operation has already been defined. There aren't many places that the Oseguera Cervantes stays for a long time. He wanders around the mountains of the Mexican mountains fleeing from justice and lives in cabins and luxury homes as well as very humble houses and caves. The DEA has indicated in a recent report that El Mencho has created its own so-called Golden Triangle, a region similar to that constructed by Joaquin Guzman Loera in the highlands of the states of Durango, Sinaloa, and Chihuahua, where in addition to having marijuana crops, Loera also hid for most of his life. This is the same strategy of the leader of the Jalisco New Generation cartel to evade justice, according to Agent Mori, except that the area in which this Golden Triangle is located is in the mountains of Jalisco, Colima, and Michoacan, a place where the name El Mencho originates from. It's believed by some that the country has a vast territory where narcotics are planted, and it is said that clandestine laboratories operate in the area and that there are important ports, such as Manzanillo and Lazaro Cardenas, where precursor chemicals are exchanged to make synthetic drugs. It's now in the hills of the Sierra Madre del Sur, as well as those of the Occidental that are the refuge of this mafioso, to whom it has been attributed that the violence of Mexico has escalated. A significant factor in the rise of his status in the drug trade can be linked to the extradition and life sentence imposed upon his former boss, El Chapo Guzman. But to become the head of Mexico's most powerful cartel, Nemesio Osguera Cervantes El Mencho had to do the dirty work and overthrow the heads of different criminal groups in the country. It should be noted that as part of the leadership processes of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, several enemies were made. Former allies who felt betrayed were also added to the list of enemies. Apparently, the authorities believe that El Mencho is being attacked from a number of sides, but one of the causes of his weakness is the blows he's receiving from one of his former friends, Carlos Sanchez Martinez, alias El Cholo, a member of the Sinaloa Cartel who acts as an ally with the CJNG. There's no doubt that the criminal organization of Cholo is being bolstered by powerful assassins, one of them being Capo de Capo, Ismael El Mayo Zambada, who was selected by the authorities to carry out the financing of the operations of the Cholo and to provide it with weapons. A lot of hitmen want to stop the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, including the sons of El Chapo and the heirs of Los Zetas, La Familia Michoacana, and Los Arellano Felix Cartels. But they end with nothing. And that's it for today's video. We hope you liked the video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. And for more such videos, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. We'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace.